The last episode was a lot of fun. It was a set of mini stories, but it didn't really advance the Ba Sing Se plot, which kind of makes sense because they're waiting to see the Earth King, right? So let's see what happens in Appa's Lost Days. I'm sorry, Appa. It's not your fault, Toph. He's tied up good. He can't hurt you. Nothing but garbage. <laughs> Saka's boomerang. <laughs> That's such a nice touch. I love that. Is that the umbrella from the fortune teller episode? I feel like I should remember that little book. Abba! Oh no, he can hear it. Wow. Speaking of animal abuse. I am going to break you. God, what is with these episodes and the creep factor? If you don't behave yourself, you'll regret it. This episode is making me all sorts of uncomfortable. Good. Oh wow, nice shot. Oh, I got out. Oh, this doesn't feel good. Nice. Oh, this is the B, B place. There they are. Oh, it's an Appa dream. It's a baby Aang? Aw. Oh, that's Aang's dream. Were they having the same dream? Oh, it's nothing. Go back to sleep. So Ira was trying to prevent Zuko from chasing them? Oh, Elway just two-handed through him. This is way more than I was expecting. Appa's been through some stuff. I feel like they're laying it on a little bit thick. There's just so many things that are happening to him, one after the other, that are just horrible and heart-wrenching. I'm waiting for, like, the relief. It's uncomfortable to watch it. Appa, it's me. If we can help you find Aang. Listen to her, Appa. Oh, thank God. <laughs> There's just too much happening. I, like, needed this break from just the torture. Suki lights up my life. Oh, come on! My, my, you're easy to find. Oh, it's the noisy lizards again. What do you want with us? Who are you? The Avatar's fan <laughs> okay. Notice that Tylee is just sitting there grinning for no reason. I get it. Good one, Azula. Fangirls. I get it too. You're so colorful, it's making me nauseous. Ugh, just a downer. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, that was a lot of paralysis. You're not prettier than we are. Oh yeah, it's two of Sokka's girlfriends fighting. Is it Bato? Hello. I am Guru Patik. You've been through so much recently. How does he know that? The power of the Guru. Let the clouds in your mind be gentle, peaceful ones. I need someone like Guru Patik in my life to gently caress my head as I'm sleeping. <laughs> Tell me, let the clouds in my head be peaceful ones. I have prepared a message for Anne. May I attach it to your horn? So that's a good sign that they'll be reunited. I can sense where Anne is. It's a very useful skill. Is it actually Aang? Who has the whistle? It is. Oh no! No! I don't want to be right! Oh, that's what Momo found. See, I assumed he was in Ba Sing Se, but I didn't know he had gotten there by root of all this other craziness. What? That's it? Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of that episode. I obviously feel for Appa, but I feel like that was that was a little much. I feel like they were really pushing the the sadness, the, the agony. It was painful to watch that. Also, just when you think this guy and the bossing, say, culture can't get any creepier, they're just so slimy, it's gross. Ugh. In some ways, I think this is the darkest arc of the show so far. It's very exciting, though. It's very good TV. Lake Lao Gai. Are these wanted posters? That is so much better. Hey, designing the lost Appa poster was my job. I've been working all day on my Appa. Can't be good at everything. The hell is that? It looks just like him to me. Thank you. I worked really. <laughs> Why do you feel the need to do that? I love how Iroh and Zuko just have this domestic life now. I feel like they deserve it after all they've been through, especially Zuko. How would you like to have your own tea shop? Oh, my own tea shop. This is a dream come true! It's funny hearing that from someone who was once next in line to be emperor of a nation. Mmm, interesting. No, just forget it. I like his hair. <laughs> How many times am I going to say that in this series? Judy, hello, Aang and Katara. <laughs> Can we just take a minute to appreciate Judy's awesome theme, like this little riff they do? 
Rosie. Hello, Aang and Katara. Oh, I simply took a short vacation to Lake Laogai. Oh, okay, so she didn't die. She obviously was re-educated. You are absolutely forbidden by the rules of the city to continue putting up posters. We don't care about the rules and we're not asking permission. You should just stay out of our way. Wow. Yeah, let's break some rules. I hate this whole place. Have you ever thought that I want more from life? than a nice apartment in a job serving tea. There's nothing wrong with a life of peace and prosperity. Yeah, I kind of understand where Zuko's coming from. We can see that he's been doing it the wrong way. He's been chasing his father's approval, but it's kind of too far gone at this point for him. There's no way he's going to get what he wants from his father. It was never there to begin with. So it's frustrating for us to watch Zuko continually throw good after bad and essentially throw his life away. That being said, it doesn't mean he shouldn't aspire to greatness. Realizing that the Avatar is not his true path is only half of it. The other half is finding out what is his true path. He does have unfinished business with the Fire Nation. He does have unfinished business with Aang. So I actually feel like his instincts are correct in this case. I don't think living peacefully is actually the goal in itself. I think the goal is self-discovery. And that might be in peace, but it might not be. And I think it's important to listen honestly to that. This is something I relate to very strongly because no matter what I do, I feel like I have a lot of unfinished business. I feel like I'm always looking for what the big adventure is. What is the thing that I'm going to do that's going to be magnificent and give purpose to my life. And I haven't found it. It's like an eternal struggle. But I do know that in searching for that thing, I have had so many amazing adventures that did give me a piece of what I needed. Each of those mini episodes has given me something really vital that I was lacking or gave me a new understanding of something that was holding me back to the point where I could then go on to the next thing. And each time I go on to the next thing, I feel like I can do things a little bit better and I feel a little bit closer. And maybe there is no ultimate thing. Maybe the result will just be that that search is a thing in itself. And that's an old cliche idea that what you needed was inside you the whole time. And I think that while that's probably true, the journey to discover that is also necessary. You can't just believe that you have what you need right now, right off the bat, without any experience. It takes going out into the world and, and trying things and meeting life head on that reveals exactly where you stand in relation to it and how much you actually know about who you are and what you can do. As for the part about choosing your destiny, I don't think you can really choose what calls you. I think that's an instinct. We all have some kind of radar for what will be exciting to us. And I think in some ways that's that's connected to what we know we need. You can't just turn those things off because they're not just random desires. It's your inner radar for what has value to you. And it's not always valuable in the way you expect. Like you think I want this thing, but actually the benefit might not be that thing, but uncovering the lie about what you think that thing is, which helps you reorient yourself towards something more useful. And so that's why I think following your nose for that kind of thing, following your gut for what's calling you is useful. You think I can't put up posters on my own? It's upside down, isn't it? Sure. I think I can help you. Mm. <laughs> Why does it feel like he's an ex-boyfriend or something? I turned over a new leaf. I'm a new man. Tell it to some other girl, Jet. It sounds like they're having a couple spat. Oh wait a minute. Wasn't he brainwashed? I put all that behind me. You're lying. Oh yeah, she can detect it, right? He's not lying. I've been cleaning up fur and various uh, leavings all day. This feels kind of like a trap. I'm getting trap vibes. We gotta get to Whale Tail Island. We have to try. No more need for old Sweepy. Get out of here, Sweepy. We can come back when we have it. All right. I appreciate that everyone's on board with that. I think what they're doing seems impractical, but I think it's the right call. Just because it's something that is important to them and up as a friend. But I'm guessing something will happen that will stop them from doing that just because it seems unlikely that they would write it into the plot that they backtrack and then make their way back here. This is going to get resolved in a way that they don't have to go see Appa, which makes me nervous. Was this guy your boyfriend or something? Yeah, see? Top and I are on the same page. No. I can tell you're lying. Mm. How did you get away from the Dai Li? The Dai Li? Oh. This doesn't make any sense. Total They're brainwashing. telling the truth. That's impossible. No, it's not. He believes it. Hey, right, look who it is. Long time to see. Let's try to lure him in. It's a scarecrow. Yeah, it was a trap. Nice. If you don't want to end up like him, you'll do what I say. Maybe Katara could kiss him. Just an idea. A bad one. Oh, someone's jealous. Try to think of something from your past that triggers your emotions. Fire Nation. Oh, it's this guy. The Rhino Riders? Rough Rhinos. It's too painful. Brain healing. They took me to a headquarters under the water. 
Like a lake. Lake, what is it called? Ogulai. Lake Laogai. Laogai. That's it. <laughs> so I just looked up Laogai. WeChat translate says it's labor reform. This is very literal. <laughs> I'm oh no. <laughs> to One is already too many. <gasps> there he is. Yes. Oh, else. that's still okay. It's better than freaking Long Fung, Fung Long, whatever his name is. At least he's with somebody we trust. Take them into custody. Long shot's getting ready. Don't even try it. Yes, an enemy becomes a friend. My favorite trope. <laughs> I'm loving all these team fights, like Toph and Katara teaming up with the drill, and now we got the whole squad plus Jet. That's great. And Longshot. The Earth King has invited you to Lake Laogai. I am honored to accept his invitation. Oh, that's the, the trigger word. No, Jet, no. Look who it is. Uncle, what are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same uh -huh. thing. For a second, I thought he didn't know who the Blue Spirit was. But the whole time I've been saying that he does, he did. But of course he does. Of course he does. First, I have to get it out of here. And then what? You never think these things through. Yes, let him know, Iroh. Put your foot down. Finally. It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? Ah! Ah! Bitter pills. That's oh, tough. It's terrifying to think about that. But big picture, he's doing things right. It's like what I said earlier. He has to follow that feeling to get to this point where he has to think about that. If he stayed in the tea shop, then there is no larger exploration. That's it. He has to keep doing it wrong long enough to get it right. And he'll probably get it right faster if he listens to Iroh's critique. <laughs> but I think Iroh did it correctly there. What Iroh did before, which was, no, you should just live a life of peace. That, I think, is not the answer. But like Zuko, wake the hell up. You need to figure this out and stop living a lie. That, I think, is the right way to support him. It's not don't follow your destiny, but it's like follow your destiny honestly and like take feedback from the world as you get it and then use that to recalibrate yourself. Oh, and I just it just occurred to me that another parallel here between Jet and Zuko, this episode seems to be partly about choices and doing what other people want for you versus what you want for yourself. So right now, Jet is literally being mind-controlled, and Zuko is more subtly being mind-controlled. But they both have to figure out a way to resist that and act in a way that is self-controlled. Jet, I'm your friend! Are you? <laughs> You're a freedom fighter! <laughs> Jet's not bad. He has some good qualities. He's got a lot going on. Do it now! <laughs> There's no time. Just go. Don't worry, Katara. Long shot speak. He's lying. Oh no. Don't tell me that. This guy said nothing on you. There he is. Oh wow, did Zuko let him free? Yes! Yes! Awesome teamwork. I can handle you by myself. Eat him. Oh, <laughs> that's cool too. I want him to bite his head off. Yes. Yeah! I missed you, buddy. Oh, what a relief. I thought he was gonna die. Thank God. Oh, Look at them. They're so close. Yeah, well, Zuko did the right thing, obviously. You did the right thing, nephew. Yeah. Leave it behind. I keep it for memories. Okay. <laughs> It's symbolic, I get it. One big metaphor that I see over and over again for Zuko is the two sides. There's the two swords, right? Two halves of the same whole. His mother's influence and his father's influence being two halves, but also his public persona and the blue spirit are two halves. And so I guess by throwing it away, it's symbolic that he's at least closer to making the two sides whole. Oh, that's the end. <laughs> My primary emotion is relief that they got Appa back. I'm so glad they didn't kill him off. I really thought they were going to. I kind of wish Appa had bit Feng Long's head off. Maybe he's less a role in the show, I don't know. Is Jet okay? I think even if we never see him again, this episode is a fitting end for him in some ways, or it wraps things up for him to some extent, because he made the right choice in the end. There's a lot happening. I feel like I'm getting spoiled from season two. See you next time.